Thank you so much. Okay, we can all actually breathe, right? I can't believe we're actually here, honestly. <laughs> so, after two years, um, this is truly um, a celebration that um, many of us weren't sure would happen and we couldn't even imagine. So um, I have to tell you, it is just so joyful to all be here together. And I know all of you are incredibly joyful about it and particularly those of you in the class of 2020 who have been waiting to do this for quite some time. So we've learned patience, if nothing else, during this season, um, and perseverance. Um, I want to um, begin by thanking the local churches of Buchanan County. I, when I first arrived here to be the president and dean, I was completely shocked when the first exam period came because um, the student services coordinator, Glenna Owens, told me that all the churches in Buchanan County actually feed our students during exam period. And I said, we have to be the only law school in America where the local churches actually feed our students during exam period. Um, I would like to invite Pastor J.N. Howard, who is with the Grundy and Looney Chapel United Methodist Churches, uh, to share with us. Uh, a blessing before we begin this evening. He is one of the many ministers who has uh, welcomed our students and uh, actually opened up the church for a number of activities. So um, Pastor Howard has actually served Buchanan County since I was a teenager. He, uh, he comes and goes in Buchanan County and we hope all of you will come and go and come back again. So just like Reverend Howard. Um. <clears throat> Would you stand with me and uh, bow your head for just a moment for this prayer? Gracious God, who gave to the human family in the Ten Commandments the first foundational laws of directions for our living together with each other and with you, we come today in reverence for the order of life that we believe you have written into the universe itself. Today, we gather to thank you for the Appalachian School of Law and to thank you for the faculty and staff who have given of themselves to teach and set standards which say that in a land of genuine freedom, we are supported by keeping basic laws of living with each other in community and responsibility. We also give our thanks and admiration for these persons who are recognized today for persevering in study and discipline sufficient to come to this moment of graduation. We ask your blessing upon them in their careers that they may be guiding lights for helping to keep the laws of our land sacred before us all. May this celebration today honor this institution, these leaders, and these graduates and you, our eternal Father, who in the creation itself have written your own best law upon the table of our hearts. In gratitude and praise, amen. Thank you, J.N. To all of you who are in person today, and of course, all of those that are joining us online in the live stream, welcome to Appalachian School of Law. It has truly been one of my greatest privileges to serve this school as president and dean. I welcome all of you, both the class of 2020, 
Where are you? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and, and the class of 2021. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Commencement marks the traditional end of an academic program, but truly it is better understood as a beginning. For the past three years and four, in, in the uh, case of the class of 2020, you have been challenged to think like lawyers, communicate like lawyers, advocate like lawyers, and negotiate like lawyers. You began that three-year journey as law students, which initially meant little more than showing up for the first day of orientation. You quickly realized, however, that it was more than showing up. In fact, it was mm, 450 pages of reading a week, maybe, writing, analysis, IRAC, C-IRAC, CREAC, yes, all of those. But now, at the end of that journey, hope, hopefully you have become students of the law for life. There is an unchanging fact that lawyers and judges know to be true. The law is always evolving. New statutes are enacted and old statutes are amended. Federal and state courts at every level issue new judicial interpretations of the law, sometimes changing the application of settled principles and other times unsettling principles previously thought to be unchangeable. You have been taught the discipline of learning the law. That discipline, however, must be engaged on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis for the rest of your professional career. So this is what is before you. This is your commencement. I know that all of you will own it, live it, and actually excel in it. At this point, I would like to recognize a number of folks who are in the audience that have gathered with us today that have made all of this possible. And I have to tell you that, you know, you at every commencement or every event like this, somebody wants to go through the list of people to be thanked. But I have to tell you, again, the pandemic has created in us a much bigger heart of gratitude, and there is no way that I could express the amount of gratitude that is needed for the people who have managed to get ASL through this last year and a half. So I sincerely say thank you to the elected officials, both local and regional, that have assisted us in getting through this. The town IDA, the Industrial Development Authority here in town, actually gave us the Riverside campus. Without the Riverside campus, we would not have been able to actually hold classes um, and comply with the federal and state regulations. Business and community leaders have assisted us and the officials of actually many sister higher education institutions and other educators. Members of our growing alumni association have been on calls with us every month helping mentor our students along the way. And the rising 2L and 3L students have have been there also to support the 3L uh, class. Members of the media and, and also local citizens. All of you have been integral and critical to ASL's success in the past year and a half. We also have today with us members of the ASL Board of Trustees, including Wade McGeorge, who is actually here celebrating the graduation of his daughter, Mary. Wade, where are you? Way back, okay. All right, thank you, Wade. And then we also have board members Tucker Davis and Reese Robertson. They are dedicated volunteers who are responsible for establishing the governing policies of the school and providing counsel on how we can best fulfill ASL's grand aspirations. We've also been well served by other groups of hardworking volunteers, including the officers, as well as the alumni association throughout. I really want to acknowledge our wonderful staff. And you can see they took the very far back seating because they wanted all the graduates to be closer. And I would like for all of them to stand, please. Um, we have spent many months
we have all spent many months doing everything possible to actually be able to have school open and have it be in person while many other schools had to shut their doors due to the pandemic. I have to tell you, it could have never happened without this team that you see back there. And this week, they have worked incredibly hard as well to make this event happen. As all of you know, the rules and regulations continue to change, including as of midnight last night. So it, it never, uh, the one thing we all need to be prepared for now is change. So, but their dedication to ASL and actually their dedication to each of you students is not easy at all to overlook and never should be but it is very difficult to overstate. I have to also say that during this pandemic again, we would not have been able to finish school were it not for our IT department, led by Brian Presley, whom I, you know, of course he's in the back and no one sees him, but um, he and Glenn Turner and Richard Gibson have kept us all in the world of IT. Many, of course, they also pulled screaming uh, and crying and resisting through it. But at the end of the day, we have managed to do it and it is all because these guys were always in the back, always with the grandest humility and making Zoom rooms happen on every, in every classroom, in every building. So please let's give them a round of applause. I'm certain the hardest part for all of them was to teach old lawyers new tricks, like how to use technology. But we have done it, and thank you, uh, Brian, Rusty, and Richard. I would also like to recognize Beth Stanley, who is this year's recipient of the Administrative Staff of the Year Award. <laughs> Her work as the registrar, which you know doesn't sound very exciting, right? But her work in this critical role is no small feat and certainly has not been a small feat during this past year and a half. So Beth, thank you for your continued devotion to our students. Glenna Owens is this year's recipient of the Library Staff of the Year Award. <laughs> And I, I should have said, these awards are actually voted upon by the students. So um, over this past year, if you have not been to the library, you need to go to the library. Uh, and that includes all of you uh, who are with your, um, your graduates. I can tell you, Glenna oversaw the most significant library reno renovation to date. And that means from the top to the bottom. She, I didn't even know what the word deaccession meant before we started this. I just knew that when COVID hit, we were going to get that library looking great. And so, um, again, the town pulled in the dump trucks, and I can assure you that the library staff has the best triceps in all of Southwest Virginia as a result of deaccessioning the books. But the place is absolutely gorgeous, thanks to many of our donors. And even during the repair of the uh, roofs, we actually had more floods during the repairs, thanks to the um, contractors. So Glenna held it together. She is emblematic of the perseverance and the spirit of ASL. And what I can say today is all is well that ends well. And thank you to the entire library staff for this beautiful space uh, that our students can continue to use. Now for the faculty, please stand. <laughs> Faculty, you are the lifeblood of this school. As one wit succinctly put it, teaching is the profession that creates all other professions. And you are indeed dedicated teachers of the law. But you are more than that, you are mentors to a new generation of citizen lawyers who will dedicate their professional lives to the advancement of a single noble idea, the just and fair application of the rule of law to all persons no matter their circumstances, and no matter how popular or unpopular their cause may seem to some. Thank you for all your long, hard hours and work this year, and also 
thank you for your willingness to learn how to use Zoom. <laughs> thank you. I also have to say that one of our faculty members, this just goes to show you how they always go above and beyond. One faculty member came up with this idea that last summer, of course, right after COVID started, that we should all take a Harvard learning certificate that would teach us how to be better professors. And I thought, well, I can't say yes to one professor and not have at, offer it to all other professors. So I did. And almost every single professor signed up to do this during the summer last year. I can also guess and bet and be assured that there's no other law school in the country that would have every professor sign up during COVID to take one more class for no more compensation. Well, when they all signed up, I thought, well, I'm teaching too, so I have to take it as well. So I can tell you what it also taught us is how hard it is to take online classes. And I suddenly realized that I was becoming like my son who's in college because all the uh, assignments were due Tuesday night and Friday night. And I thought, I'm always cramming on Tuesday night and Friday night, this is not pretty. So um, anyway, it taught us how to be students at the same time we were trying to be teachers. So faculty, thank you for inspiring me uh, and for being the faculty that will go above and beyond the call of duty. Next, I would like to welcome Delegate uh, Will Wampler, he is a native Southwest Virginian. He graduated from the University of South Carolina and Liberty Law School, and he represents the Commonwealth's fourth house district. He is here to congratulate our graduates on behalf of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you, Delegate Wampler. Thank you for that introduction, Dean McClanahan. As Justice McClanahan, as many of us know you, graduates, this is an exciting day, a significant day. You've made it. You're finally here. It's customary at these types of events to offer some wisdom, and so I will attempt to do that here this afternoon. Uh, I can tell you that upon your graduation here today, and upon your successful passage of the bar exam in a few months, you are getting ready to enter one of the world's greatest service professions. That is the law. Now, if you decide to run with it, you are gonna be capable of providing more good to more people than largely any other profession that you could dedicate your life to in the United States. And that is a tremendous thing. But with that, power with that position comes great responsibility. You're going to have to take everything that you've learned in your personal life, added and coupled with the facts and the, and the experience that you had here at ASL, along with the status that's granted to you as a member of the bar and as an attorney and a counselor, and wield it for good. Some of you here today may become prosecutors, some of you may become guardians for children in need, incapacitated adults. Some of you may go on to represent the country's largest corporate entities. Some of you may set out your own shingle, represent small companies and individuals in need in each of your communities. Wherever your path leads you after law school, I'd offer that you need to remember a couple of things. Always lead with humility and by hard work. Never forget where you came from. And always stand willing to help those in need. I promise you, graduates of ASL, when you leave this place and you become members of the bar, you will have those individuals come to you in their greatest time of need. And it'll be up to you to help them. I want you guys to think what it was like Many years ago when you came to ASL for the first time, your first week of class, you didn't know which way was up. You didn't know if you were gonna be able to respond to the coursework, if you were gonna be able to pass your exams, how you would stand up next to your classmates. Would you be at the top of the class? Would you be at the bottom? I hope you're able to look back at that time of uncertainty with fondness now. Let me just say, all of that is behind you. 
now here at graduation, you get to put that behind you and look forward. There's only one barrier left between you and a lifelong career of service in the law, and that is the bar exam, which is coming up in July. Um, I would offer to you, spend your summer, although it's gonna be pretty and you're gonna wanna do other things, spend every minute of your summer prior to the bar exam studying hard. Dedicate yourself to that. And once you pass, the world is awaiting. Keep your friends close during this period and as you go forward in your career. They will be the ones that you call on for help and support uh, as you go forward in the law. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't thank my dear friend and mentor, Justice Elizabeth McClanahan, for inviting me to speak to you. It is a great honor to be here with you on this happy day. Um, as you go forward, I want you to think about Justice McClanahan, Dean McClanahan, and the type of example that she has provided to you. I said that you've got to dedicate yourself to working hard and leading with humility. That is something that Justice McClanahan does every day. I told you that if you're always willing to help, you're gonna find a glorious career in the law. Justice McClanahan is the type of individual that has gone out of her way throughout her entire life to share in her Christian generosity and take care of others without expecting anything in return. I would encourage you to go out with that same attitude. However, if you do hang out your own shingle, make sure you charge for some of that generosity as well. <laughs> to those supporters of ASL who are upset that Elizabeth is moving on, I will say that she has left this place in much better position than when she found it. And your incoming dean, Dean Keith Faulkner, who is my former law school dean at Liberty, uh, has also a record of taking every school that he has been at and improving on it. So to those of you who are gonna be continued and support with the school, you have great leadership coming in. And lastly, I'll just say to the graduates, when you leave this place and go forward onto whatever comes next, do so with confidence and pride in all the hard work that you put in. It is gonna pay off for you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Will. It is now my privilege and honor to introduce to you our commencement speaker, Justice Powell. I first have to tell you that she also was elected by popular vote from the two classes um, who are here graduating today to be your commencement speaker. Let me begin by telling you the basic facts about Justice Powell. She served on the Supreme Court of Virginia since 2011, becoming the first African-American woman to sit on that bench. She received her undergraduate degree with distinction from the University of Virginia and also her JD from UVA being what we say in Virginia is a double who. Prior to her appointment to the Supreme Court of Virginia, Justice Powell was a labor and employment lawyer at Hunt and Williams. She later served as a senior assistant attorney general for the Equal Employment Opportunity and Personnel Section in the uh, Office of the Attorney General. She also served as corporate counsel for Virginia Power and director of their employee services department. She actually began her judicial career on the Chesterfield and Colonial Heights General District Court in 1993. She was appointed to the Circuit Court in 2000 and then to the Court of Appeals in 2008. Here at ASL, she serves as a distinguished professor of law, diversity mentor, and the L. Anthony Sutton Endowed Lecturer. Now, from what I've said so far, you've probably concluded that she is actually superwoman. And I can tell you she is. But there is much more to Cleo Powell. I've known Cleo for over 13 years. We worked together on the Virginia Court of Appeals and later on the Supreme Court together. She is a trusted colleague and a dear friend. Everyone who has worked with her has observed the extraordinary combination of character traits that make her who she is. Cleo is sincere but self-disciplined hardworking but balanced, 
teachable but resolute, and strong but kind. I cannot think of anyone who better exemplifies what I hope for in all of our ASL students. Thank you so much, Justice Powell, for being here with us today. Good afternoon. Thank you, Elizabeth, my colleague, my friend, and my sister, for that very, very kind introduction. Graduating class of 2020 and 2021, congratulations to each and every one of you. If my speech sounds familiar, it's because Delegate Wampler copied my notes <laughs> and gave my speech. So I'm sorry you have to hear it again. But today marks an important milestone in your lives and the lives of your families, and I am overjoyed that you would invite me here to spend it with you and to just say a few words to you as you launch out into the deep. You have done what no, S no ASL class before you has been able to do, and that is to manage the very difficult task of studying for and passing three years of law school, the last two of which you have done in the midst of a pandemic with an overlay of COVID tests, temperature checks, less than sufficient bandwidth, you've done something that is sh nothing short of heroic, and I applaud you for that. But before we get ahead of ourselves, there is a group of folks here uh, that we have not yet recognized. And so I want you to take a moment, and I want you to help me acknowledge that you did not get here by yourself. You each had family, and friends, and prayer partners, and other cheerleaders who loaned you their strength when yours was waning. And so I want each graduate to rise and face your family members and your friends who are here with you, and I want you to give them a, a hearty round of applause of thank you. So for just a moment, and this is the, the Wampler portion that he stole. <laughs> That's a terrible word to say, delegate. I'm sorry that he borrowed, that he borrowed. I want you to think back on the time before law school, and I'm going to bring you forward. Think about the angst that you experienced wondering if you would get an invitation from a law school. Think about the delight that you experienced when you received an acceptance letter from ASL. Think about your arrival here, that first day in class when you sat there and there was a professor speaking a dead language only used in today's modern world by lawyers. How arrogant are we? Think about that first law school exam. Think about the first year accomplished and behind you. And as you think about that, think about the many times that you wondered in the back of your mind whether you had made a colossal mistake in daring to think that you, from the coal fields of Southwest Virginia, or from the tobacco fields of Brunswick County, or you fill in the blank of where it is that you came from. What made you dare to think that you could join the ranks 
of the men and women who uphold the rule of law, the men and women who are the guardians of the rule of law. Or was that just me? And each day you sat in that classroom where these dedicated men and women, these professors, shared with you their knowledge. And they challenged you to grow. And it came to the point where you started to think like a lawyer. You began to analyze cases. And one day you realized that you were making a cogent, persuasive legal argument. And it was at that point that you realized, yes, I do belong here. Yes, I can do what scores of men and women who have gone before me can do. And I can make a difference in the world and uphold the rule of law. You have successfully completed all of the requirements upon you to have conferred upon you that wonderful title, that wonderful degree of Juris Doctorate. And you have been working at it for three long years, and today you officially join the ranks of men and women who have gone before you. Today, you officially become one of those men and women who will work tirelessly to preserve the rule of law and to see that justice is afforded to every man. Today, you join the ranks of trained attorney and counselor at law, knowing that you can do it because you have done it. Having done so, you will take on many responsibilities to many different groups of people. First, you will take on a responsibility to the world. The world needs more men and women of character who will demand that the rule of law be honored. You know the rule of law because you've learned it here at ASL. No man is above the law. No man is beneath the law. We all stand equal before the bar of justice. The world needs more people like you who have equipped yourselves to be those men and women. And as lawyers, you now stand at the center of a profession which some say, which many have said, and I believe it's true, underpins democracy. And if democracy is to remain vibrant, if it is to flourish, if it is to thrive in your corner of the world, it will be your responsibility to make it happen. Unlike any other profession, ours is the only one that simultaneously touches life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yours is a weighty responsibility, and I challenge you to rise to the occasion. Next, you will take on a responsibility to the communities in which you live. The communities in which you live will turn to you to bring order to chaos. You're uniquely equipped by your training and experience to bring people together to work for the common good. You will be sought out to hold public office, to sit on boards, to sit on uh, organizations, school boards. Again, a weighty responsibility. And again, I challenge you to rise to the occasion. Live out that oft repeated adage, to whom much is given, much is expected. As an ASL graduate, I encourage you to always have a heart for the underdog. And in doing so, you should always strive to make sure that when the law comes to rest at every man's fireside, and it will, that it does so in a just and fair fashion. And lastly, but certainly not least, one of those groups to whom you will owe a responsibility will be your clients. Your clients will come to you. They will place their cause and their trust in your hands. 
and you must handle that trust as a sacred trust and bring all of your considerable skill to bear to attain a just result, recognizing that they have entrusted you with their property, with their families, and sometimes with their very lives. You have received an excellent education here at ASL. You have been equipped and you are now equipped to move out to take your place in the world among a group that we call lawyers, lawyers. And as you go fulfilling your many responsibilities, I implore you to always work hard, to act professionally, to act ethically, to act civilly, knowing that you represent this very noble profession and knowing that you represent ASL. But not only have you prepared yourself with substantive education, but you have also been prepared by example and by experience. You came to this mountain, some of you chose the mountain, others the mountain chose you. But however you got here, you all experienced something that is uniquely ASL. And trust me when I say that it is unique. You experienced by example the tenacity and the determination of a dean, of professors and a staff, all who combine their considerable gifts to make sure that no matter the challenge, they were giving you the tools that you needed to succeed. You each arrived here with different skills and different abilities. Some were you were strong in one set of qualities, others were strong in others. Some of you were weak where others were strong and vice versa. But these men and women valued your individuality and they refused to treat you as a group. They identified what you needed, adjusted to meet you at your point of need, and whether it was the addition of a bar prep class, additional remedial classes that you were forced to take or incur the dean's wrath, legal writing, tutoring, whatever you needed within reason, these dedicated men and women determined to make it all happen. And so we have arrived here today at this place in time where we celebrate each of you for the individual accomplishment that you have made. Some of you moved the mountain. Some of you climbed it. Some of you tunneled through it. Some of you leaped the mountain in a single bound but as evidenced by your presence here today, you all conquered it. So not only do you have the legal knowledge that you need to be a great lawyer, but you also received it in a manner that gave you a unique perspective, and I'm gonna call that the ASL way. Along with your mastery of the substantive law, you developed an attitude of intellectual curiosity, flexibility, innovation, caring, empathy. You developed open-mindedness to develop and value the different opinion. You learned to challenge the status quo and do so respectfully. You learned tenacity. You developed a mindset here set by the example of those who taught you, and a, a mindset that will allow you to move mountains. These qualities that you learned here by example, I implore you to apply them in every situation you encounter. But I would be less than transparent with you if I did not caution you that the practice of law will not be easy. And I've told you before, it should not be because too much is at stake. There will be difficult cases and difficult days and difficult weeks and in those difficult times, I ask you to draw on your ASL experience and the ASL way. You will forge ahead, you will be flexible, you will be innovative, 
and you will move the mountain that is in front of you because that is precisely what you have been trained to do. So today, not only will you graduate with a law degree, but when Dean McClanahan confers your degree upon you, and you know, those of you who know me know that I could not leave without saying this thing, you will become a member of the Justice League. You will have superpowers, and you will have superhero status. And your superpower will be to hold the light in your hand. As I've told you before, as I oft quote from Justice Thomas's poem, light is the place where justice can grow. And so, as today, as you receive your degree, I dare you now to go into the world carrying the light of justice and to share it with those in need who but for your presence would suffer an injustice. I dare you now to carry your considerable skills and abilities and unwavering love for justice and the rule of law into the world to shine the light of the law on injustice wherever you might find it. Because when justice works as it should, lives are changed for the better. When justice works as it should, systems are changed for the common good. So I implore you to use your superpowers to be a change agent and to make a difference in the world. One final thought that I want to leave you before I take my seat. You may be the only class who will receive a plurality opinion from the Supreme Court of Virginia, your first opinion from the Supreme Court. I did ask my colleagues, what would you say to your graduating self if you could look back on it? And some of them responded, and I'm going to give you that plurality opinion. For, for the family members, a plurality opinion is one where you have at least four justices concurring, but no one agrees on the point, and so you have four different points. So here we go, from Justice Goodman. Believe older people when they tell you that the years will pass quickly. Enjoy the moments as you experience them, and cherish the good people you meet and the experiences you share with them. Listen to your heart and trust your instincts. From Justice Mims, mercy is an integral component of the law and, in, and perhaps the most important one. From Justice McCullough, and if you've read his opinions, you know he's a little wordy, and so he says, while you often will be steered towards possession, power, and position as the paramount objectives of your life, you will find that the greatest peace and joy come from the giving and receiving of love. And he goes on. The best compensated work is not always the most fulfilling. Nonprofit or governmental service can enrich your life and the lives of others in ways that, more, that are more lasting and meaningful than the sides of your bank account balance. And for me, be foolish enough and brave enough to take a chance. Your journey is not about you, but it's about the positive change that you can make in the lives of others along the way. I sincerely congratulate each of you on a job well done. I wish you a successful career in your time as attorney and counselor of law. I wish you Godspeed. I am now going to take a personal point of privilege and invite Carrie Mills, our SBA president, to the podium for some, a few words. actually not on the schedule, so surprise. <laughs> I only have two quotes for you and just a few words to follow. I'm only the five-minute speaker, so 
to be done quickly. Brene Brown wrote in her book, Daring Greatly, courage starts with showing up and letting others be seen. The classes of 2020 and 2021 have not just shown up with unfettered courage, but they have prevailed under extraordinary circumstances. In fact, our fearless leader has put it in many, many times, and you've already heard this today, we've moved mountains. If you are unaware of who our fearless leader is, he's the one and only retired Justice Elizabeth McClanahan. This is gonna be very difficult for me, so you just have to go with me on this, okay? <clears throat> the Dean of Appalachian School of Law. She has been leading us for two years and has been there for every single second of the COVID, whatever you wanna call it. We'll just let you guys decide. I called her our fearless leader, but in reality, she is a great leader. However, great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. And it's never about the role, it's always about the goal. And I believe that Justice McClanahan was determined to make a difference when she came to this school and wasn't going to expect anything less than excellence. And we are forever grateful for all that you have done to help us succeed in our graduate program and leading us to excellence. So if I could please have everyone join me, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure in the essence of moving mountains and in honor of her unwavering efforts in leading the Appalachian School of Law to the summit. We, the graduating classes here today and the classes of 2022 and 23 to follow, dedicate the second floor library space in honor of Justice Elizabeth A. McClanahan. Okay, Carrie, you're in contempt. <laughs> um, I told everybody we could not mention my name during this event, and obviously Justice Powell, uh, nor all of the classes here and those not represented uh, didn't listen to me. So I'm not too good a leader. They don't pay attention to what I say. Um, but anyway, I, it has been my greatest privilege to be here, um, and it's, I, haven't moved the mountains, all of you have moved the mountains. And it is just, it's been the greatest privilege of my life. So thank you so much. Um, okay, so now <laughs> our um, valedictorian for the class of 2020, our Brie Cornelly is unable to be with us today. So our salutatorian, Andrew Wesley Giles will speak uh, in her stead. Andrew is actually a native of Scott County and attended the University of Virginia's College of Wise, where he received a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and a minor in Pre-Law. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Giles to the podium. Good afternoon. Thank you, Justice McClanahan, for the introduction. Well, as you all just heard, I'm the salutatorian, so sometimes being second best has its perks. So you guys get me today. Uh, I wish Ms. Cornelli could have been here to partake in this privilege, but I'm honored for the opportunity. This opportunity means so much to me. ASL mission statement states, provide pro is to provide opportunity for the people from Appalachia and beyond to realize their dreams of practicing law and bettering their communities. That mission envelops me I'm a Southwest Virginia boy, as you just heard. I'm from Scott County. Just had a, about an hour and a half down the road, and that's where you found me. That's what I used to tell my classmates here at ASL. 
I love being here. As I recently told a group of people, I love Southwest Virginia. I don't plan on ever leaving, and I want to stay for the rest of my life. I want to do what I can each and every day to make this a better place and represent those in my community in whatever situation I, I can help. And I learned a lot of that through ASL. ASL is all about community. There wasn't a day I didn't walk in and see a smiling face or a, hey, how are you? Um, it's always somebody there to greet you and make you feel welcome. It is my hope that each and every one of you have enjoyed your time in Southwest Virginia and at ASL and will take a part of it with you wherever life takes you. After graduating, I accepted a position at Sydney Cobb Law Office. Sydney is a 2009 graduate from ASL. Sydney has a general practice in Lee County, Virginia. While I was interning my second summer here at ASL, I was at the Lee County Commonwealth Attorney's Office. This random attorney, Sydney, approached me and began talking to me. He said, how about coming to the dark side? So I took his advice and I went and uh, hung out with him a little bit. And uh, shortly after, I signed a contract with him, a three-year contract. So thank you, Sydney, for being a wonderful boss, mentor, friend, and taking a chance on me. Thank you, Susanna, Kristen, Angie, and Jamie, for welcoming me, your patience, and keeping me in line. I tell you that story to coin the importance of networking, and sometimes things happen when you least expect them. I never imagined one conversation would lead to my first job, but it did, and it can for you. Just throw yourselves out there and see what happens. To the class of 2020, the few of us that are here, I've seen a couple of you, not everybody, but this is, we finally get our special day. It's wonderful to see those here. I've enjoyed each and every moment we spent together. It was not always easy, but we made it. I found going through your toughest battles sometimes forms an unbreakable bond. I can only speak for myself, but for me, I found some of my best friends at ASL. Some of my favorite and best conversations come now from calling my ASL classmates and talking about our day, work, or just life in general. It is my hope all of you have passed the bar exam and begun a career. If you have not, don't give up. It's right around the corner. You did not come this far and embrace the challenges of life, law school, and whatever else there is out there to quit now. Everything is possible. Sometimes we just must dig deep and find true motivation for success. Anything worth having is worth working for. You're almost to the peak. Keep climbing. You will get there. When I began this speech, I did not anticipate addressing the class of 2021. I am humble for this opportunity since I was just in your shoes a year ago. I know all of you have one thing on your mind, and that's how do I manage the next few months to pass the bar exam. My first piece of advice is one formula does not fit all. As we've all heard Professor Scott say, there's one, more than one way to skin a cat. Focus on that. Experiment for the first couple of weeks. Find out what works for you and stick to it. You will get through it. Don't forget to take breaks. And most importantly, just remember, it's just a test. You've passed, I don't know how many tests now. You can pass one more. As I close, I would like to offer you some advice. First and foremost, we are all stronger than we think we are. Look what each and every person in this room, not just the, um, uh, my various classmates in the class of 2021, professors, parents, family, everybody, look what we came through this past year. We faced the forces of a pandemic and overcame it. Never forget that. Pat yourself on the back for it. You deserve it. The pandemic is not on, the only challenge we will face moving forward. Life is going to keep throwing you challenges. Embrace them and overcome. In any situation you face, be just and humble. You will not regret it. Be just enough to get and achieve things. Be humble enough to remember how you got those things. When you get caught in the fast lane, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. Dream big, but not so big that you leave reality. No matter where life takes you, don't forget where you came from. We all came from somewhere, and that place means something to us. It will make you a better person. Finally, in this profession, you define your own success. Set goals for yourself. Make yourself better. I was talking to the office staff yesterday, and they wanted me to give you this piece of advice. Be kind to clerks and your office staff. They can make or break you. Work so hard that you don't have to introduce yourself anymore. Congratulations to the class of 2020 and the class of 2021. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Andrew. Our valedictory, valedictory speaker for the class of 2021 is Barbara Ann Malone, a native of Caswell County. Barbara attended Old Dominion University where she received a Bachelor of Science in Human Services. Prior to attending law school, she worked as a social worker and a substance abuse counselor in Southwest Virginia. 
Barbara has served on the executive board of the Appalachian Journal of Law as the senior articles editor and senior notes and comments editor. She has also interned for Virginia Supreme Court Justice Teresa Chapin, who also serves on the ASL board. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Barbara Ann Malone to the podium. Thank you, Justice McClanahan. Thank you to the faculty, faculty and staff, and a special thank you to our family and friends for gathering under the circumstances. After everything you had to go through to be here today, it seems you may have just earned your free hour of legal advice from your respective graduate. I would like to congratulate the class of 2021 and 2020 on a job well done. So many had numerous obstacles to overcome and made many sacrifices over the last three years. Some of you are parents raising children while going to law school. Some had long commutes every day to attend class. Others packed their whole lives up and moved across the country to chase a dream. Then there are the personal obstacles and silent battles that others are not aware of. Nelson Mandela once said, may your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. I feel I can safely say that your choices clearly reflect the hope you have for your lives. There were times you could have made the choice to give up, but instead you chose hope. Those of you who decided to move your entire lives to the coal fields of Southwest Virginia deserve extra kudos. I grew up a few miles up the road and I can imagine the culture shock some of you had. But I hope you found that not only are the people here extremely kind and serving, they are resilient and resourceful. I have found that many of you are extremely kind, serving, resilient and resourceful as well. Day in and day out, we grew to know each other. We witnessed each other on good days, bad days, and at the end of a two week stretch of final exams. The thing about a school like ASL, it's full of good people. I lost track of all the times someone missed class and at least two or three people made sure that classmate had notes from what they missed. If someone missed class unexpectedly, you can bet they had a text message making sure they were okay. If anything, it was just always nice to know that someone understood your pain. And sometimes the most comforting thing you can hear as a grad student is me too. The late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was once asked if she had to give advice on how to lead a productive life what would that be? She said, if you want your dreams to come true, you must be willing to put in the hard work it takes to make that possible. We live in a society where with will, determination, and dedication, you can be whatever you have the talent to be. I would use those same three words to describe the class of 2021 and 2020. Will, determination, and dedication. You've shown time and time again, unwavering willpower in the face of adversity and your dedication and determination for success is nothing short of inspirational. It's been a pleasure to get to know all of you. I would be honored to serve and work alongside any of you. I pray you continue to choose hope and chase your dreams. And I look forward to hearing about all of the great things you accomplish. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Malone. I would like to recognize one of our faculty members, the Honorable Chadwick Dotson, who is a former judge here in the Great Southwest, as I like to call it. Uh, he is actually this year's recipient of the Professor of the Year Award, again, voted upon by the students. 
Before joining ASL as a full-time faculty member last year, Judge Dotson served as the Commonwealth's attorney for Wise County in the city of Norton and then was elected by the Virginia General Assembly to the General District Court bench and was then elevated to the Circuit Court bench in 2011. He now serves as our Dean of Students and Distinguished Professor of Law. There is no question that his experience on the bench has served students well. His dedication to seeing his students succeed and becoming the best lawyers that they can be is what brings ASL great pride. Judge Dotson will present the candidates for graduation. Thank you, Justice McClanahan. Candidates for degree, class of 2020, Juris Doctor, Andrew Wesley Giles. <laughs> Dean's List, Fall 2018. Dean's List, Fall 2019. Dean's List, Spring 2019. Dean's List, Spring 2020. Three Semester Dean's List Award, 2019 Intra School Moot Court Finalist, Book Award in Spring 2020, and Advanced Torts and Virginia, Virginia Civil Procedure and Practice. Maria Janella Loiza. <laughs> ASL Ambassador and the Litigation Civil Certificate. Congratulations. <laughs> Margaret Lucinda Reed. <laughs> Trial Advocacy Team. <laughs> Sahar Mahmoud Tamon. Book Award, Summer 2020, Marijuana Law and Policy. Book Award, Spring 2019, Constitutional Law 2, and 2020, Intra-School Moot Court Finalist. <laughs> Technical Sergeant Gail Kimberly Wilkinson. <laughs> ASL Ambassador. Sam Weddington Little Red Wagon Award 2020, the Willard Owens Award for Excellence in Community Service 2020, Book Award Fall 2019 in Post-Conviction Relief, SBA Senator 2020, SBA Fiscal Policy Rep, Criminal Law Certificate. Now, candidates for degree, class of 2021, Juris Doctor, Shannon Lane Adams. <laughs> Virginia Trial Law Award, the Book Award, Summer 2020, Procedural Fairness. Thomas Edgar Alexander. Book Award Spring 2020 in Remedies, Book Award Fall 2020 Estate Planning and Pretrial Practice, Dean's List Spring 2020, and Dean's List Fall 2020. <laughs> Rebecca Lee Altman. <laughs> the Book Award Spring 2020 Immigration Law and Policy, Dean's List Spring 2020, Dean's List Fall 2020, ASL Ambassador, and Will the Willard Owens Community Service Award 2021. <laughs> Selena Nicole Barnhart. <laughs> the Virginia Family Law Award, Dean's List Fall 2019, Dean's List Spring 2020, Dean's List Fall 2020, Moot Court, Natural Resources, Environmental 3L Team, Appalachian Journal of Law 2021 Articles Editor, Appalachian Journal of Law 2020 Associate Editor, the Book Award Fall 2019 for Appellate Advocacy in Criminal Law, 
and constitutional law one, criminal law certificate, and litigation certificate. Cassandra Robinson Blair. Mona Jade Branham. <laughs> ASL Ambassador, Angela Dills Spirit of ASL Award 2020, SBA Honor Court, Associate Justice 2020, and SBA Senator 3L for 2020 and 2021. <laughs> Troy Michael Brown. Jeffrey Amun Caballero. <laughs> Book Awards Summer 2020 Contract Drafting and Insurance Law, SBA Senator 2021, and Mr. Caballero passed the bar exam in Vermont before he even graduated. <laughs> Courtney Zaida Teresa Cole. <laughs> Book Award, Fall 2019, Appellate Advocacy, Natural Resources. There's more. <laughs> Book Award, Summer 2020, Poverty, Health, and the Law, Medical Legal Partnerships. Dean's List, Fall 2019. Dean's List, Fall 2020. Moot Court Executive Board, Vice Chairman, Moot Court National, Natural Resources Environmental 3L Team, 2020 Intraschool Moot Court Natural Resource Environment 2L Team, 2020 Intraschool Moot Court Finalist, 2021 Health and Business Law Transaction Moot Court Team, Appalachian Journal of Law Senior Editor, SBA Honor Court Deputy Chief Justice, Natural Resources Certificate and Litigation Certificate. Dennis Coral. <laughs> Book Award, Fall 2020, Legal Writing with a Purpose One, and MBE Fundamentals. <laughs> Kevin Michael O. Day. Dean's List, Spring 2020, and Litigation Certificate. <laughs> Cody Evans. <laughs> Moot Court Executive Board, PR Chairman, ASL Ambassador, SBA Senator 2019, 2020, and 2021. Dean's List, Fall 2019, 2020 Intraschool Moot Court Natural Resources Environment 2L Team. <laughs> Thomas R. Fusel, Jr. <laughs> Book Award, Summer 2019, Contract Drafting. Book Award, Summer 2020, Law Office Management. Book Award, Fall 2020, Current Issues in Constitutional Law. Dean's List, Spring 2020. Dean's List, Fall 2020. <laughs> the Empress, Ronika Unique Graves. <laughs> Thomas Blackwell Hart of ASL Award 2020. SBA Honor Court, Associate Justice 2020, ASL Ambassador, and Criminal Law Certificate. Hunter Faith Hayes Price.
Charles Leslie Huffman IV. Thomas Carl Irvine. Taylor Kristen Jenkins. Book Award, Spring 2020, Trial Advocacy. Book Award, Fall 2020, Advanced Torts. Dean's List, Fall 2019. Dean's List, Spring 2020. Dean's List, Fall 2020. Appalachian Journal of Law, Senior Editor. ASL Ambassador. SBA Vice President 2021. SBA Senator 2020, SBA Fiscal Policy Rep, Trial Advocacy Team, VTLF Trial Advocacy Award, 2020 Intra-School Moot Court Champion, 2020 Intra-School Moot Court Criminal Law 2L Team, Alternate, Angela D. Dell's Spirit of ASL Award 2021, Criminal Law Certificate and Litigation Certificate. Austin Hunter Johnson. <laughs> ASL Ambassador, SBA Pharmacy School Outreach Rep, and SBA Student Activities Council Rep. <laughs> Alex G. Joseph. Book Award, Fall 2019, Evidence. Book Award, Fall 2020, History of Race and Law in, the, in America. Dean's List, Fall 2019. Dean's List, Spring 2020. Dean's List, Fall 2020, and Litigation Certificate. <laughs> Lindsay Kathleen King. Sam Weddington, Little Red Wagon Award, 2021. Book Award, Summer 2020, Juvenile Practice. Book Award, Fall 2020, Bar Subject Review 1, and Mineral Title Examination. And the Willard Owens Community Service Award, 2021. <laughs> Caitlin Grace Leonard. Book Award, Fall 2020, Current Issues in the Law and Post-Conviction Relief, and Dean's List, Fall 2020. <laughs> Megan Ashley Lester. <laughs> Book Award, Summer 2020, Juvenile Practice. Book Award, Fall 2020, Virginia Criminal Law and Procedure. Dean's List, Spring 2020, Moot Court, Criminal Law 3L Team, ASL Ambassador, 2020, Intra-School Moot Court, Criminal Law 3L Team, SBA Student Faculty Liaison, Willard Owens Community Service Award 2021, Criminal Law Certificate and Litigation Certificate. <laughs> Andrew Ray Liverman. Book Award, Fall 2019, Advanced Legal Research. Book Award, Fall 2020, Criminal Practice. Dean's List, Fall 2019. Dean's List, Fall 2020. Appalachian Journal of Law, 2021 Editor-in-Chief. Appalachian Journal of Law, 2020 Associate Editor. Criminal Law Certificate and Litigation Certificate. <laughs> Barbara Ann Malone. Valedictorian for the class of 2021, 
Book Award, Spring 2020, Business Associations, and Legal Writing with a Purpose, Professional Responsibility, Social Security Disability, Wills and Estates. Book Award in Fall 2020 in Family Law and Secured Transactions, UCC. Dean's List, Fall 2019. Dean's List, Spring 2020. Dean's List, Fall 2020. Appalachian Journal of Law, 2021 Senior Notes and Comments Editor. Appalachian Journal of Law, 2021 Associate Editor. Mary Rachel McGeorge. <laughs> Trial Advocacy Team. <laughs> Carrie Lee Mills. Book Award, Summer 2020, The Resurgent Role of Legal History, ASL Ambassador, SBA Vice President 2020, SBA President 2021, SBA New Organization Review Rep, Trial Advocacy Team, the Thomas Blackwell Heart of ASL Award in 2019, and SBA Senator in 2019. <laughs> Kenneth Davis Owen. The Book Award, Spring 2020 in Administrative Law, Appalachian Journal of Law, 2021 Publishing Editor, Appalachian Journal of Law, 2020 Associate Editor, Dean's List, Fall 2019, SBA Honor Court, Associate Justice, 2019 and 2020, 2020 Intra-School Moot Court Finalist, 2020 Intra-School Moot Court Natural Resources Environment 2L Team. Noah Michael Pace. Garrett Wade Patton. Book Award, Fall 2019, Virginia Drafting. Jessica Reed. <laughs> ASL Ambassador. <laughs> Ashley Suzanne Root. <laughs> Dean's List, Spring 2020. ASL Ambassador, Appalachian Journal of Law, 2020 Associate Editor, SBA Secretary, 2020, the Thomas Blackwell Heart of ASL Award, 2021, 2021 Health and Business Law, Transaction Moot Court Team, and Litigation Certificate. <laughs> Sahar Sumro. Book Award, Spring 2020 in Constitutional Law 2. Book Award, Summer 2020, Constitutional Power, a Contemporary Examination. Dean's List, Fall 2019. Dean's List, Spring 2020. Dean's List, Fall 2020. Moot Court, Criminal Law 3L Team. 2020 Intra-School Moot Court Runner-Up. 2020 Intra-School Moot Court Natural Sort Resources and Environment 2L Team and Litigation Certificate. Christian Damien Tuala Ramirez. <laughs> SBA Senator 2021. <laughs> Hannah Toth. Moot Court Executive Board Chairman, 
ASL ambassador, SBA committee student rep, American Bar Association, and Dean's List, fall 2019. Idalia Yamalet Ventura. <laughs> Appalachian Journal of Law 2021 Managing Editor. Appalachian Journal of Law 2020 Associate Editor. SBA Senator 2019, 2020 Intraschool Moot Court Finalist. Congratulations, right? <laughs> this is a very exciting moment indeed. Now, these candidates have completed the requirements for the degree of ju Juris Doctor. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and with the approval of the faculty, I confer upon each of you the degree of Juris Doctor upon the completion of the requirements with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto to protect the life, liberty, and property of your clients. You may move your tassels. To conclude our program, I'm pleased to welcome to the podium Captain Philip Bucky Blevins, who will issue the Alumni Challenge to the graduating classes of 2020 and 2021. He has been the president of the Alumni Association for ASL. He's a Southwest Virginia native, 2013 graduate of UVA WISE, and a 2016 graduate of ASL. He recently graduated from the University of Missouri with an LLM in dispute resolution, and during his time at ASL, he served as a court-appointed special advocate, president of the Student Bar Association, and editor of the Appalachian Journal of Law. After graduation, he clerked for the late Honorable Henry Vanover, and in 2017, he was commissioned as an officer in the JAG Corps of the United States Air Force. Captain Blevins is a decorated prosecutor and combat veteran. He has served as the president of the Alumni Association in this last year, frequently waking up at two or three in the morning, living in a, essentially a metal bunker, conducting meetings from Afghanistan. His energy and enthusiasm are infectious. He also serves ASL as a career coach, veterans admissions specialist, and as an alumni advancement officer. Please join me in welcoming Captain Blevins. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, friends and family, but more importantly, good afternoon to the newest members of our Alumni Association. You know, I realized after sitting through this entire program that I owe you folks an apology because like Delegate Wampler, I also stole Justice Powell's notes. <laughs> Although I like to say we all belong to the same commencement study group. So it's truly an honor to, uh, to be here with you today. Um, and Justice McClanahan just officially indoctrinated you into the Alumni Association. You are joining the ranks of more than 1,600 active alumni members. ASL graduates are practicing all across the world, literally from shore to shore. You'll be surprised about how much you have in common with our alumni members. We all trade war stories about how Buzz Belleville asked us to define a contract on our first day of class. When we talk about Tom Scott's trial advocacy, professional responsibility, and the notorious KISS method, which we all practice law by. For those of you who might not know what I'm talking about, that's keep it simple, stupid. That's, uh, that's how we practice law, and we love to trade those stories. But at heart, we're much more connected than that. You see, we're all problem solvers. We are servants to the law and the communities that we reside in. 
Those values, they've been instilled in each of us and in each of you. From day one at ASL, we are taught to leave it better than we found it, to do good, and to serve others. Now, it's custom and tradition that the Alumni Association president attends graduation to do a few important things. One is to recognize all of the graduates and welcome them in, but the other is to present a challenge, and lastly, to award the valedictorians with a $500 gift from the Alumni Association. Graduation this year is special because if you've heard, we have two valedictorians here to celebrate. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've already heard those valedictorians are Arbery, Cornelli, and Barbara Malone. Keep your eyes on these ladies because they are going places. More importantly, they're $500 richer and they might buy your supper after this event. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize one other person in the audience. This person is First Lieutenant Select Taylor Jenkins. Taylor has been offered a commission in the Air Force JAG Corps upon our graduation and successful completion of the bar exam. So Taylor, thank you for your dedication to our nation and for making that privilege. Now lastly, ladies and gentlemen, it's customary for the Alumni Association President to present a challenge to the graduating class. But I'll be the first to tell you that challenge is a tall order for you. You have not only went to law school, but you've also graduated in the midst of a national pandemic. But those of, who, uh, those of you who know me know that I love to talk, uh, and I'm happy to present a challenge anyhow. But in order to do so, I have to share a, uh, a quick war story. Uh, and this all began when I was in Afghanistan in August of 2020. So on Tuesday, August the 18th, I was called to advise a commander on the lawful execution of lethal force. This is a moment I had prepared for. I knew the laws backwards and forwards, but I just hadn't had the opportunity to put this into play. Around 2 a.m., my trailer door, as, as you heard Justice McClanahan describe it pretty much accurately, I'm, I'm thinking she had pictures of it, uh, my, my trailer door was knocked on loudly and I was jarred up from sleep, and I was told the commander needed me in the, in the Combined Air Operations Center to, to make a tactical decision about the use of lethal force. A few minutes later, I was standing in that room with the commander, with his advisors, and several TV screens. On one of those TV screens was a target of opportunity. The commander was considering executing this target, and the only thing that stood in the way was a legal opinion. He turned to me and he said, Captain, is this strike legally permissible? Now, mind you, at the time, I'd been out of law school four and a half years, had never thought about using lethal force until I joined the JAG Corps. But I knew the lawyerly answer. Like any good lawyer, I said, well, it depends. <laughs> I began asking questions surrounding the event and the target of opportunity. One question I asked was, what was this target's last 24 hours like? What was his pattern of life? A staff sergeant, E6 in the Army, quickly spoke up and looked me in the eye and said, Sir, the target's last 24 hours have been unremarkable. Can you imagine hearing those words? His last 24 hours were unremarkable. There are 1,440 minutes in a day. How could not one of them have been remarkable? So as those words washed over me, I made a vow to myself and a vow that I hope each of you will take as well. And that's no one is ever going to be able to say, my last 24 hours were unremarkable. So graduates, that's my challenge to you. Don't forget where you came from, leave it better than you found it, and never let anyone say that your last 24 hours were unremarkable. Congratulations, graduates, and welcome to the Alumni Association. Thank you, Captain Blevins. We appreciate all you've done to invigorate the Alumni Association this past year, but also for your service to our great nation. So thank you. <laughs> now, someone told me that, do you have your bags that were given as gifts here with you? So, as all of you know, I grew up in this county, and so I, we do have rival high schools that those of us who are in the great southwest know all about but 
I understand there are cowbells in these bags. Is that true? They had to have come from one of you. Mr. Giles, Gate City, they always had cowbells. Richlands, they always had cowbells. Well, I said, who decided this? Richlands or Gate City? But I'm going to give you the opportunity since we have been ordered not to scream and yell and throw things. We get to ring our cowbells before the um, Appalachian Highlanders come back for the recession. So everybody can ring their cowbell at this moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. It, it is going to be so much fun to be more expressive in the days and months and years to come, right? So um, again, thank all of you so much. It's been um, a fabulous, beautiful, celebratory day, and all of you have earned it and worked very hard for it. And I know all of those who love you that are with you um, have also worked hard and loved you and given to you and supported you. So um, I will ask the... Highlanders to join us again and then everyone is dismissed. Thank you.